It's just innately in Dustin's personality. If he can milk something, he's going to milk it, <laughs> no matter what it is. But I don't mind because I expected him to need a lot of help. But it hasn't been too bad. Just doing his hair has been really like getting it in a ponytail is not as easy as it looks. So we did, I did this and then Dustin fixed it. It's definitely gonna take a learning curve to get it right, but uh, I would say it was okay for the first time. What would you rate it on a scale of one to 10? Five. I would have said seven. Five. Seven. It was seven. Definitely five. Seven. Definitely room for improvement. <laughs> Any history of staph or MRSA infections? No. And any history of poor reactions to medications? No. And any history of being COVID positive in the last three months? No. And any allergies that we need to be aware of? No. Okay. So I'm just gonna have you fill out some pre-op forms. Alrighty. And then um, we'll kind of get the party started here a little bit. I've got my pre-op appointment for uh, surgery in the morning uh, for TJ, so had to fill out some paperwork and now go over some stuff with Dr. Eletraj for surgery in the morning and, um, and start the road to recovery. TJ is Tommy John surgery, a reconstruction of the ulnar collateral ligament in the elbow. Two months into the season, it is the last thing Dustin May expected. Having earned a spot in the starting rotation, May was proving to himself and opponents that he belonged there. The 23-year-old out of Justin, Texas, starting his third year with Major League time, Dustin May, his first pitch of the year. I just went out and did everything that I could possibly to, to show that I deserved it. And then, I mean, the reward of earning the spot, it just like fueled my fire to want to go out and to show even more why I deserve to be in that spot. May strikes out Machado. Look at Dustin May storming around, man. That kicked him into another gear. For me personally, I just wanted to kind of take a step forward on top of last year. Be able to get guys out a little quicker, go a little deeper into games, get some more starts under my belt. And up until the point where I got hurt, I was doing that. The next one, two to Caratini. Got him looking. Nine strikeouts for Dustin May. That start in Milwaukee, it was, the day was going well. Going into the first inning, stuff was coming out well. I got a couple punchies. To the corner with 99, strike three. I got the first two guys out. I gave up the home run. And then first pitch to the next guy, it was the cutter up. And I felt a, I felt a little grab in my elbow. And then I threw, I want to say like three more pitches and they kind of progressively got worse, but not super bad. And then the last fastball that I threw, it definitely felt like somebody just like ripped my elbow open. Dustin May winces, he let that pitch go and then immediately waved to the dugout to bring out Dave Roberts and the training staff. I definitely knew something was wrong and I definitely knew I couldn't throw another pitch after that. That's when I called the trainers out and bit the bullet and said, hey, I gotta, I gotta come out of this game and uh, the rest is history after that. This is a guy that, you know, is just starting his career. Never been hurt before, and I just, just could only imagine all the things going through his head. Obviously the pain, but what's gonna happen with my career, not even the season, and just all the uncertainties. breaking news here. Dustin May has some UCL damage in his right elbow. According to initial examination, the Dodgers will make official decision on how to proceed in the next 24 hours. Difficult news. Uh, we'll have more coverage today on MLB. 
it definitely sucks. Uh, the not knowing because your mind definitely wanders and you start to think a little more about it. He wasn't able to come home. There were still a few more days that he spent in Chicago, so it was kind of just a waiting game to hear back about the MRI results and then a waiting game for him to just be able to come home. I was actually taking a nap in the hotel before I was gonna head to the field. And then Dr. Elitraj and Neil Ramp called me. He was like, hey, like, it looks like you're gonna have to have Tommy John. There's really no other way around it. Tell whoever you need to tell and get prepared for that. When he told me that, it was even more like heartbreaking just because the fact that I had worked so hard for and fought so hard for that position and spot that I had gotten and now I have to battle back and recover it and go through the rehab process and get back to where I was. Mays in the skilled hands of orthopedic surgeon and Dodgers head team physician, Dr. Neil Elitrosh, whose list of notable patients includes Kobe, Tom, and Leo. Good to see you. Hi. I'm Neil Elitrosh. How are you doing? How are you? Good, how are you? Did you have any hint, hint that anything was feeling out of sorts over the past several weeks? I mean, I thought it was just normal soreness, but I mean, nothing that was where like... You, where were you feeling? I mean, it was like on the like flexor mass, yeah. but I mean, it wasn't anything like overbearing or like I never felt it when I, when I threw, it was always and like... your velocity stayed up, I saw. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it was always the same, so... This isn't the kind of tear that I would trust to just go ahead and put stitches in it and just and take that tissue and repair it down. We'll, we'll repair your torn tissue and supplement it. We'll put, put a graft in to give you extra stuff. That'll all heal together. Okay. And that gives it really, really good strength and support. Gotcha. Okay? Mm-hmm. You've got a Ferrari motor in, in there. In, you know, your velocities this year were up. You were barely second in all of Major League Baseball. Yeah. And, um, and so we're going to ask this new ligament to, to bear all that, you know? Mm -hmm. A little zing. No. Good. God willing, this will be the hardest thing you ever go through in your career. This is typical for for the big time athletes. Once they have some things happen, they go through a brief period. They're a little upset, a little angry, and then they understand that it, you know this happens as part of the whole thing. Yeah. Once they accept it, they want to they want to go. You've got some really good trainers and therapists around you, so yeah. you know, we'll, we'll get you better. For sure. Regardless of how we felt, whether we were sad, mad, upset, disappointed, that wasn't going to change our situation. But something that's going to make it better is just focusing on doing everything that he needs to do to start and end that healing process when he's finally able to get back out on the mound. Any questions, anything comes up, just call me. Okay. All right. Cool. Okay. All right. See you. Nice you. All right. Yeah. Uh, thank you. I right, see you tomorrow. Appreciate it. <laughs> I feel like I've been down here in Arizona for, for too long at this point. So yeah, there's a little bit of a sense of urgency for sure on, on getting back there, but I know that it's not like a rush thing and I still gotta go through the whole, the whole process and uh, you know, get feeling right before I get back there. As Dustin May's season comes to an abrupt end, his teammate and friend is getting closer to seeing his season begin. Tony Gonsolin has been stuck in Arizona since inflammation in his pitching shoulder landed him on the injured list in early April. Almost two months into the season, Gonsolin finds himself in baseball's version of purgatory, rehabbing away from his teammates at Camelback Ranch. When I first got here, there was still the, um, the alternate site guys and the all of the minor league camp still here, so there's a lot of guys rolling in and out. But now that minor league season has started and most people are out of there, the numbers have gone down a lot. Definitely feel a little isolated, you know, they have their, we have our group chat with the team and just feel a little disconnected from that, which is okay, because, you know, I'm not there, but just itching to get back.
It's been really annoying uh, being on the aisle to start the season. You know, I feel like I worked really hard this offseason and spring training to earn a roster spot. And for myself personally to get hurt and kind of diminish that a little bit, like it's not, it's not a great feeling. So I've been trying to do my best to, uh, to crush rehab and you know, try to get back out there. Back to sandwich. It's going to be a solid day. Get it. Back in Los Angeles, Gonsolin's teammate expects his day to be solid too. Undergoing the surgery that saved more than half a thousand careers since Tommy John first underwent the procedure in 1974. I've made peace with it. There's nothing I can do about it. It's the situation that I've been dealt, so uh, you gotta you gotta go at it head on and attack it. I'm gonna take Dustin back and I'm gonna get him ready. And then once he's already set and go and he's waiting just for Dr. Alitrage, I'll bring you guys back. I don't think there was really any time for either of us to feel too nervous because things were kind of happening fast. We didn't have a lot of time to wait before that. I think that the two of us have been through so much, especially just pertaining to baseball and life in general, that we don't get shaken easily. Oh, yeah. So you're so excited. Did you have to get shaved? Yeah. It's like getting pampered. I was just about to say, do you feel like you're having a spa day? Yeah, almost. <laughs> it would be like three nurses in here working on you. <laughs> like when it comes to Tommy John's, everyone just takes an extremity. So the prep is like literally five minutes, but a lot of people say, oh, yeah, I feel like being treated like a king. I got three <laughs> nurses working on me. I was never really super worried throughout the whole process. I knew that he was in super good hands, but he seemed to be, you know, in a lighthearted mood before the surgery. And I think we were both just really ready for the surgery to get started and then be over. Yeah, I mean, she already treats me as if I can't take care of myself. So oh, that's how I treat you, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so you're gonna be taking care of me. Yeah. Extra. That's how you want to be days. treated. Yeah. Uh -huh. No reason not to be. Oh my gosh. Yeah, but only for a couple days and then you'll be fine to do all uh, I'm gonna milk it. <laughs> I'm gonna milk it. Having her by my side, whether it be before or after or whatever, I mean, she's always she's always helpful in that fact. She she kind of puts my mind at ease and gets me thinking about other things instead of the negatives that possibly could go wrong, she she reassures me with the positive facts of it. So um, yeah, it was definitely really nice to have her back there right before surgery. We are ready to roll if you are. All right, hey, let's get this show on the road. Yeah. He's got a great support system. She was wonderful and, and uh, very sort of calm and confident going into the operation, which makes it a lot more pleasant and, and easy for him rather than, than having a significant amount of anxiety about uh, an operation like this. We'll take good care of him. We'll see you All right, right, sounds good. Good luck. Hello. Hey, um, Dustin, they just called and Dustin's surgery just started. Okay, okay. Yeah. So you were just waiting on them to let you know? Yeah, they will call. I think they'll do an update mid-surgery and then they'll call again when it's over and then they'll come um, get me when he has woken up from the anesthesia. Okay, okay. How was he this morning? Um, he seems pretty good, just, you know, like usual. Not too nervous or excited or anything like that, but just, I think, ready to get it over with. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Dustin was cracking jokes, of course, and they, uh -huh. they had to shave his leg, so he thought that was very funny. <laughs> and he has a hairnet on, so I can't imagine what his hair is going to look like when he gets out of surgery. <laughs> Well, I will um, update you when I hear from the nurse again. Okay, that sounds great. I appreciate it, Bill. Okay, sounds good. All right, love you. All right, love you too. Bye.
Dustin May is undergoing Tommy John surgery in LA as Tony Gonsolin continues on the rehab road at Camelback Ranch. Today, he's scheduled to throw off the mound for the first time since going on the IL. Here, watching Dodger games helps pass the time during his recovery. But watching May pitch in Milwaukee and then have to leave the game triggered a different emotion. The two pitchers are close, mirroring each other's major league experience and rooming together through spring training. Ultimately, you know, not the not what you want to see. I don't I don't like seeing that with with Dustin, let alone any any guy. First and foremost, I was hoping that it was nothing serious that uh, you know Dustin was gonna be down for a week and and you know come back through it stronger than ever. Um, so it was more so just like being you know upset with the news and checking in with him, seeing how he was doing, and you know trying to maintain that that relationship with him because he's friend first, and then you know baseball second, so. Rehab's been going good. Starting into that build-up phase right now, you know, trying to build up pitches, innings, all that stuff to, you know, hopefully go out, go back and help the team the best I can. Tony's a guy that we're gonna count on, and we counted on you know, when we broke camp, uh, albeit in a different role, but then when you lose a guy like Dustin now, uh, Tony's got to step up and take on that fifth starter role. We just want to be make sure that he's ready to go physically um, to handle, you know, whatever workload is going to be in front of him. My goal for myself personally is to is to get healthy and, and get back on the field and do the best that I can do whenever I get the opportunity. So whether they need me in, in the bullpen for you know one inning, two innings, four innings, whatever it is, or or starting a game and, and giving it my all and going as long as I can, you know, I'm up, I'm open for all that. He's still kind of not feeling so great, so as soon as they get his pain a little bit more under control, then we'll bring him back. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. So hopefully it's another 20 minutes or so. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Not yet, but almost. It does suck waiting for it to be over just because I just want to see him and be able to take him home and just start the recovery process. But I feel like this day we've been anticipating it so much since he got injured, just being able to get it fixed so we could start healing. Um, so for me, I'm just kind of excited as time passes knowing that pretty soon it will be over. Hey. Hello. How are you? Good, how are you? So he, he's awake and doing everything I asked him to do. So I just okay. was checking him. Everything looks really good. Awesome. I, I'm really happy with the way this turned out. Good. Okay. Uh, you know, right now he's in a splint. Everything's working. His nerves are all working. And everything. We're just gonna work on getting him comfortable. Okay. And um, go from there. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Okay. You can be really happy with it. Okay. okay. Awesome. Thank you very much. <laughs> With redheads, you have to take a little more anesthesia um, to put you out. So right before surgery, I go back, and Elitraj likes to come back and say, like, good night. But he came back, and he was like, we're going to get you back to normal, and uh, I'll see you in an hour or so. And then right after he did that, I kind of, like, put my head back, and I hear the nurse go, god dang, redheads, because we have to take more anesthesia. And I guess I was taking a lot. And it turns out I, had to t I took three times the amount of anesthesia to, like, put me down. And then after surgery, it, it, was, it was kind of a blur. Like, I didn't really remember any of it because I was in a lot of pain, but we got through it. Supposedly, surgery went well. Um, everything went as planned, um, is what I heard. Um, pain level is way down now that I got the, got the shot. Um, ready to start the road to recovery. Your ligament was torn just like on the MRI scan, like it looked all the way at the top and at the bottom. So there was really not a good attachment for your own ligament, but the, but the tissue quality was good. So I put stitches in that and then pulled the bottom down to reattach it where it belongs on the bottom. And the same thing on the top. 
and I put the graft in from your wrist and forearm. And I brought that across the joint three times. It, every, every time you put that across, each one of those strands is as strong as the ligament. It really is, uh, as far as that goes, is as nice as I have seen. So Sweet. it looks really, really good. You know, the challenging part of, of any of these types of injuries that, that takes um, a bit of time for rehab and recovery is, is you know, they're going to sit out of their sport. He won't have an entirely normal preseason next year. He'll still be in the final stages of rehab. And the threat of not playing, really it's the first time in his life that uh, he'll, he would have to face that. <laughs> Awesome, thank you very much. <laughs> it was really like a headache trying to wait the week to get the surgery, and then now that it's over, it's now I gotta wait until I can start doing the recovery stuff. So, yeah, it's just the whole thing's gonna be a waiting game, and you can't push it. We'll get him going as soon as his wounds heal and, and uh, start the rehab process, but I really expect him to have great things in store uh, in the near future in professional baseball and with the Dodgers. Pretty much been homebodied and pretty much in the bed. I uh, really haven't been able to do much because moving it around really, really seemed to agitate it. So I just kind of stayed in bed, took my pain pills when I was supposed to take them and uh, just tried to be as easy on it as possible to start the recovery process. At this point, uh, no more twitching, and I got all the feeling back in my arm. It's not in very much pain today on day four, so definitely going in the right direction. It went as expected, uneventful, which is exactly how I would have wanted it. Um, I knew that I would you know, have to help him with certain things. The only thing that's been really hard for me is doing his hair. He has this thing that he has to do after he washes it where you like finger curl the curls. I always do that for him. But now I have to do like the scrunching part with all of the product and stuff. So I never thought I would have to do that because Dustin is very particular in how he likes that done. So he, only he does it. And um, so I did not think I would ever have to do that, no. I've honestly been like a little kid that she's had to take care of the last couple of days because I couldn't do anything by myself. I mean, I'm pretty much missing one arm at this moment because I can't move it and it's been in so much pain. So yeah, it's just, she's been, she's been my rock. I don't really think he's driving me crazy. Just the regular areas that he drove me crazy in before he got surgery. <laughs> yeah. I missed. Yeah, you missed your face. It didn't get on your shirt, though. That would have been funny if it did. Yeah. Because it takes you kind of a long time to change your shirt. Yeah. You're so funny. They're so funny. We are very sarcastic to each other. We like to make jokes to each other and other people. Um, we really bring that out in each other. And so that's something that maybe sarcasm is our way of when there is a tough situation, just making it a little bit easier to get through. Here we are. Balanced breakfast. I've definitely been milking it. I've definitely been using her in probably spots I didn't really need, but uh, you might as well milk it while you can because she feels bad for me, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use that to my advantage as long as I can. How is it? I know. I know. Eating with my left hand is tough. It's something that I'm not very skilled at and uh, didn't think I would ever have to be, but probably should have practiced earlier because now it's something that I have to do and it's not, not an easy thing to do. It's a silver lining because now you're learning a new skill that you wouldn't have learned before. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. This is not going to adversely affect him in any way. If anything, I think it's going to show him what he already knew, which is that anything can be thrown at him and he can rise to the top. The two of us can accomplish anything together, no matter the feet, how big or how small. Nine days, I go in for my post-op appointment with Dr. Elitrage, and at that point, he'll take out the, the stitches and take off the soft cast, and he'll put me in a splint to start my range of motion and get me moving forward on the rehab stuff. That's when the, the recovery starts. 
Good job. See, it doesn't look that bad. Like, it really doesn't look that like you're uncoordinated with that hand when you're eating. It looks like that's just how it's supposed to be.